Come on and shine, shine, shine. Las Vegas, shine your light on me. Welcome to Las Vegas Tonight. Join award-winning host Dale Davidson as he interviews the most remarkable people you'll find in the entertainment capital of the world. You'll meet entertainers, sports figures, newsmakers, community and business leaders, and people just like you with stories that'll touch your heart. Now, here's Dale Davidson. Welcome to Las Vegas Tonight. I'm your host, Dale Davidson. Each and every week, we bring you fascinating guests. Boy, we've outdone ourselves this time. He's a return guest. His name is Christopher Dare. He is Pastor Dare. He is Professor Dare. He is Councilman Dare. And uh, in his spare time, he has a family. Yes, a wonderful <laughs> family. You. Yeah. <laughs> Good seeing you. And uh, we've been friends a long time, yes. so it's great to see you again. Um, thanks for coming back. Honored to be yeah. here, and uh, it's always good to come into town and to be here. And we're, yeah. we're actually here in town on doing some great work as well. It's oh, exciting. that's wonderful. We want to hear about yeah. that as well. Uh, let's first and foremost, for those who watched you last time on the show, you were talking about the Veterans Memorial yes. up in Sparks, right? Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's exciting. It's in Sparks at the marina, so if you've ever been up there. Yeah. If you've ever been to Reno, a lot of people know where Reno is. If You wouldn't know when Sparks started because it's right there you know it's so like you, Henderson to Las exactly. Vegas exactly yeah. you wouldn't know you went from yeah. the other and mm -hmm. you know you're so you're so close that you see sparks as a kind of you want to put that in there but uh, sure. it's, it's right there and uh, but it's a statewide memorial and this memorial we have 894 names to put on that memorial they were all Nevada service people. all Nevada service people from the state of Nevada and that's from the time of the Civil War now when we talked about it it was an idea that we said hey we're doing this we don't know when, how, what, we have a lot of things together. Well, now we have a full 3D rendering that we also started uh, our groundbreak. We had a groundbreaking the other day. Wow, congratulations. Oh, we had over 600 people wow. at this groundbreaking on a wow. Friday. It, it was, Good it was, for you. It was truly an amazing thing. You know, it's funny, even when we got started, people said, how many people you think? And I kept thinking, man, if 30 people show up, I'll be happy. It's on a Friday. And, it's <laughs> yeah, kinda, and the weather's questionable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And all we have sudden, things to do. We have dates to go on. It was yeah. amazing. My wife got to sing at it and stuff. Oh, but we, yeah. The neat thing about it is not just a memorial with a wall, because a lot of, you know, we have a lot of that happening, and those are wonderful. But this is a, a, a large area that will be a place for gathering. But it's also an education piece, which to us is kind of what has really driven us to, to really stay on task of this. Yeah. Working with teenagers and working with the next generation, a lot of times they have no idea what this freedom really means or where it came from or how much they should honor it. And so they don't realize what, was co what the cost was. And so I think these names do that. But we're also going to create a thing around the whole portion of the marina where you get to walk up and... You'll see, you know, oh, what was the Vietnam War about? Oh, this is oh, what happened. Oh, that's great. And you'll get to see pictures. And we're even doing a thing, an interactive thing online that we're working with a few different, like Switch and some of those groups. Oh, and wow. So we're, it, it's, it's exciting to see what's happening. The whole community up there is getting behind it. But the key to this is it's statewide memorial. Right, so whatever, right. you know, if you live in the state of Nevada, whatever county you're in, you're going to have people from your county on that wall. And we even have a tree that represents every county, wow. but it's a statewide. It has every you know, every every uh, line of the of military. They're gonna be there. Marina, uh, the Marines. You have uh, Army, um, Navy. You know, Coast Guard. Each of them are gonna be listed. Air Force, and then we have a bench for them. It's just it's just exciting to see it it all come together. And and we had our groundbreaking, so everything is beginning. The first wow. phase is mo moving forward. That's so, wonderful. Oh, it's exciting. That's really exciting. Um, you, you had uh, early on, and it's wonderful to see an idea come to fruition. And uh, I got to see right at, the, mm -hmm. right at the outset of this. But you had the mayor uh, involved, the mayor of Sparks mm -hmm. involved, and council people. And, and it was kind of a political move. But you brought the churches in, and you brought all kinds of people together. Well, this, and so you? this whole thing, just because in the city of Sparks, and I am a city of Sparks city councilman, it's, it's actually ran by a nonprofit group that we mm. put together. And the mayor of Sparks is the chair of this. I'm the vice chair of this particular okay. thing. We would have done this without ever being in politics, but yeah. we very much are excited. And you really do have churches involved, rotary groups, all kinds of service groups, schools. We have the whole community is just behind this. And it's pretty awesome to see, that especially awesome. if, you, if you're reading up to the marina, we have 
thousands of people who go through there every weekend. Really? That's just no exaggeration. And and so you have people going around there all the time. So it's going to be a something that people get to come and see and oh, learn and great. grow, teach their kids. And we'll take school kids on it, actually. It will make field it a, it's a field trip type yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah, the educational aspect of this I didn't know about, and that's great. So you have scenes from the different wars that these mm -hmm. people participated in and, yep. and plaques or whatever yes, that yes, explain exactly. it. exactly. Oh, okay. Well, we even have, like, you have USS Winnemucca. You have, a, I think, I'm sure we probably have some Navy boat from down here that's also went. Yeah. So each of those would be listed showing what Nevada has brought to the table. Oh, yeah. And, and our role is significant. We have done awesome things. Every life is significant, but, man, we have quite a story to tell. Yeah. And then the neat thing, and I, I say this, is that uh, though the wall will be here, on the ground, there's t we made it very inexpensive. If people want to put their name on a brick, they can do so. And they can help support the memorial, but also... Yeah. Say, hey, I care about that. How much does it cost to put a brick in? So you have everything from $100, which we okay. purposely did the smaller $100 brick. Yeah. And we kept it cheap just so anybody should be able to afford a brick. Sure. I mean, that's our goal. But you can get a bigger one and then a bigger one. The most expensive one's a $1,000 brick, but that's a corporate type brick. Yeah. And it's pretty large. But even the $100 brick's pretty nice. They're all granite oh, and that's beautiful. Nice. And, and the crazy thing is we've had so many different groups just step up. You know, we, we actually were going to buy this big... Uh, a centerpiece is going to be a state of Nevada and we had a, a sculptor come who's going to make it out of steel and donate everything wow. and then we have somebody else wow. this is even more exciting That's unusual we had somebody else come up and he said you know can we make that into an eternal flame and I'm all what do you mean talk to me about that he he's owns a local uh, gas company and he says I, I will take responsibility for everything of keeping it going forever and we'll put the flame on top of it and so there'll actually be a flame at this thing, this an eternal wow. flame, just constant, just beautiful. It's just oh, our whole community great. has stepped up, and it's going to honor those those people who get, whose life were taken to for our freedom. It'll teach, and also for generations to come, it will tell that story. Oh so, wow, well, that's great! Well, it just saddens us. Sometimes it feels like some of the stories being told are almost what we shouldn't have done, instead of how to honor what we've done. And yeah. you know, we have a lot to be honored. That doesn't mean we did everything perfect, and it doesn't mean we, you know. The, the, there's some portions that you know maybe we could have shifted or what, but to go back and try to unwind our nation, we have so much to be thankful for, so yes. much to honor. Yes. And I, and I I challenge us that we're we're careful with that. So this type of thing lets us be a part of that. Well, this will be a great legacy for you, your family, yeah. and the other people that that it's had something to do. Well, with you're it. part of that legacy now. We've been <laughs> on here twice. <laughs> That's, we've talked about it yeah. anyway. When it's done, it'll be the third time a charm. We'll come back and say, look. There it's you done. go. Here are the pictures. <laughs> um, Speaking of our nation and where we stand, it's unusual for a man of God, for a pastor. You've been a longtime mm -hmm. pastor, a missionary who's traveled all over the world mm -hmm. doing missions. Uh, what got you into politics? Well, it was Las Vegas. Is that right? Well, you know, I grew up here, I know obviously, you did, yeah. and pastored just down the street from here. But as while I was pastoring, I started getting involved in the homeless situation because at the time, the particular mayor decided. Let's ship, put people on a bus who are homeless and put them out to Prim. I don't know if you remember that story. No, I didn't know Well, you'll that. know who I'm talking about if you yeah. just think about it. Drop so, them off. <laughs> he would. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And so mm -hmm. I got involved saying that cannot keep happening. That's not the right answer. And that's not helping anybody. Yeah. Not even helping our city because they would just come back. And so the whole thing was, was bad. So we got involved in, and I started a... Uh, um, of a multi-group with all different churches from different backgrounds, okay. multi-faith, and uh, that particular group we started started doing homeless outreach. Okay. Well, I started working with the mayor at the time of Las Vegas, and I started working with all the different city leaders. Well, the closer I got to all of them, I'm all. I think I can do this. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I you know, I, I mean, yeah. hum humbly speaking, I'm not trying to put anybody down, but I'm thinking, I. Yeah. I yeah. Uh, I'm watching what these guys are doing. I'm thinking, I, I'd like to make some of those decisions. I don't know if I always like Be the decisions. Be at the table. Yeah, yeah. I don't always yeah. like the decisions being made, or, yeah. I, or I think I had something to offer. And so I was about to run for uh, county commissioner down here, actually. Oh, okay. I so didn't know that. So that was 15 years ago. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So 15 years ago, you know, good friends of ours, even Robin Joyce was going to be my oh, campaign yeah. manager. Sure, and sure. We, 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 had, we had a yeah. lot of different things were all kind of yeah. moving together, just starting. And then life for me shifted and, it, yeah. and ended up bringing me out, out of Vegas. And so I kind of gave up the whole idea. Yeah, I really yeah. did. I, but I felt like it was a calling, but I thought, well, Lord, okay, I'm going to trust that you know better than me. Yeah. We're going to follow your path. Well, but being up, up north, all of a sudden, 
and the Lord is hilarious how it works. Yeah. I've become really good friends with the county commissioner there. He hears my story and he keeps saying, you need to run. I'm all, there's no way anybody from up north is going to take someone from Las Vegas. No, they, no. You, you tell someone you're from we Las kinda, Vegas. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. we have this rivalry going on <laughs> between the schools and then the people. Oh, and, exactly. Yeah. Believe yeah, me, I even yeah. had one of my people running against me, went and told everybody, you know he's from Vegas, right? <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that, that was part of their ploy. The, and, this carpetbagger. <laughs> yeah. So, but it ended up being where uh, the Lord just opened the doors. And I'll tell you, I have found so much favor in just stepping into what God's asked me to do. Mm -hmm. And and that's that's the part that's probably the best part of my story for all my life, actually. Yeah. I mean, I've done things. I mean, you're right. I've traveled to 50 countries doing training, teaching, doing. I just It's amazing what God's opened up doors for. Right. But it's really him. I, I, I have no reason and some I have no reason to be doing some of the things I'm doing, but God has a sense of humor and uses us anyway, I guess. But uh, and I'm even honored. I got to go back to school and get my psych degree and my master's degree That's or great. in organizational leadership and, and hopefully I, I do plan hopefully get my doctorate and you know, there's a lot of different things that God just keeps opening doors for that I you know, and, and you don't have to even push that hard. I mean, a lot of times people think, you know, we're, we're taught something here in the U.S. Like, you you got to go knock down those doors to make it happen. Well, when you're when you're following God, He has a lot he, better he habit to open to those you. doors than I do. Yeah, And absolutely. yeah, it, it, exactly. And you can trust, you can trust that His plan is so much better than ours. And, uh, and I've lived like that for a long time now. And so uh, just applying that to each part of our life, it, it becomes one of those things that you're like, well, you know, for a great example is, you know, when I even ran for office, I tell people, because like, aren't you worried you're going to win or lose? I'm all, that's not my job. My job is not to win or lose. I'm going to work my hardest. But my job was to run. My job was to say yes. Yeah. If, if the Lord didn't want me there, he would have closed that door. Yeah, that's right. Just yeah. like anything future, there's other ideas I have, other things I might run for. And even then, if the Lord wants me there, he'll open that door. And I'll work hard. I have not uh, I'm not taking he away. You to I'm do not that. taking away my part. I am yeah. a living, breathing human being, ready yeah. to kick it. But at the same time, if I have to go make something happen, then who gets the glory? Yeah, exactly. I take it then because yeah. I made it happen. Yeah. But if I sit back and say, "No, God, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to come to you. I'm going to believe in you," and then all of a sudden, He does something awesome. Yeah, it's so, incredible, isn't yeah. it? Let's talk a little bit. Back up a little bit to uh, the 50 countries. Um, I remember hearing the stories about the places you were, <laughs> and you were you were in some pretty you were in the, in the Amazon, you know. I mean, you were all over the place. What motivated you to do those missions and to do those trainings, and particularly to go to the third world? You spent a long a lot of time in uh, undeveloped no, it's true. and true. I, I, I have. You know, you know, it started when I was a teenager, yeah. and this is part of where my story kind of begins. I felt called to ministry when I was about eight years old. Really? Yeah, with, with Greg Massonary preaching. Sure. And I was, I think I got kicked out of Sunday school, <laughs> so I had to sit next to my parents. He he, he was preaching off a storm, must have been a great sermon because it got my attention. Yeah. And I remember standing on my chair in the middle of a sermon because he said, is there someone here called to ministry? And I'm all, me. And at, I can tell you from that day on, it's not... It's not shifted. Well, but wow. then they started doing some mission work, and I just found such purpose, such a purpose in helping people. And then when I was 17, I went and worked with Teen Mania uh, Ministries. Oh, Remember sure, Teen Mania? I know them, yeah. So Ron yeah. Luce, so I yeah. was one of the first interns they had, and oh man, I caused so many problems. I don't know, <laughs> truthfully, they almost kicked me out of a free, I paid them and they almost kicked me out. <laughs> That's true. I, I can tell you stories. Sounds like my childhood, <laughs> it absolutely does. But. They put up with me, and they, they loved on me, and they taught me. But during that time, I got to go all over. Like, I was in Venezuela when I was 17 years wow. old for two months. I mean, that's the thing. If people would only realize, back then, that was, so that was 27 years, 27 years ago, 28 years ago. Right. And uh, Venezuela at that time was a capitalist country. It was. And, and at that And doing very well. Well, it was one of the strongest in the region. Right. Even they were called Little America at the time, yeah. actually. They, I mean, they, they touted it, and everyone agreed with it because they were growing like we were. Yeah, and they and had city service stations. Until up socialism here stepped the in, US. and they are where they're at within 20 years, if, 25 years. If that's not a lesson as to how well 
not <laughs> socialism works. But that's my Venezuela is a perfect but, example. But that's, that's my point. Yeah. But but being there, I got to travel around. I got to go way out into all oh, the jungles. It was amazing. Wow. And I'll tell you, we got to go. My my favorite probably was I somehow after years talked my wife into going with me to Panama, <laughs> out in the Darien. <laughs> we're out in this crazy little handmade boat, and we're crocodile hunting. Wow. My bride is so tough. She's, she only cried like 188 times, but it was awesome. She didn't push you out of the boat, which she had every right to do, I'm thinking. Well, the crazy thing, so Panama, so one of the reasons we went there is that there's a, there's a guy that uh, he's still living, and he lived there for 30 years. I think it was 30 years, maybe 20 years, but he translated their, uh, their native tongue and made the Bible into their native tongue. Oh, His name is Dick be. Scott awesome man of God, loves the Lord, and he lived there. I got to stay in the little hut he lived in for 20 years. Dude, wow. My wife barely made it like four days. This guy lived there for years. But he translated the whole Bible, which also gave them actually written language. It's That's the first amazing. written language they had. Well, yeah. that whole area now has other books and can read, and they're learning. Well, what that did, though, to this whole region in the Darien, each of them have kings, quite literal kings. Now, they don't wear a crown, but they are known as the king. You do nothing in that community if the king didn't say so. Yeah. Well, they've decided there's no other church coming to the Darien except four square churches because they translated our language for us. So there are, yeah. even to this day, still pockets of villages that are waiting for someone to come, build them a church, and then they're, they will they will assign a pastor. God Usually. bless him. And so know? it was Dick amazing. Scott, that's well, amazing. but we got to go. I went to like yeah. seven different villages and got to put churches in and then install the pastor and pray over the pastor. And oh, usually, God you know who became you. the pastor? The king. Yeah, that's right, of course. Oh yeah, he's all, of course. I'm the pastor. He's the boss. He's the boss. He's the boss. Which means that whole, I mean, so when you talk about touching the world for Christ, and that's, I mean, I would never have come up with that plan. That is hilarious, amazing, what an amazing what plan. What a God thing. God does that. Yeah, we need to take a okay. brief break. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna talk with Michael Williams who is a student of the university you work for, mm -hmm. Multnomah, during our next segment. And then you and I are going to come back and wrap things up. And i got some pretty good questions to ask you, I think. Fantastic. We'll be back with Michael Williams right after this. A potential audience of more than 50 million people is reached every week by Las Vegas Tonight. To keep the important message of Christ's love on the air, we need your prayers and financial blessings. Please send your tax-deductible gift to Dale Davidson Ministries, 9030 West Sahara Avenue, number 255, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89117. For a donation of $25 or more, we'll send you a copy of Dale Davidson's new book, Las Vegas Tonight, From Sin City to Vegas Saints. You'll love these inspiring stories of Las Vegas Christians who are changing the world or donate to the ministry or order Dale's book by going to vegasaints.org. That's vegasaints.org. Or call us today at 702-480-3989. That's 480-3989. God bless you. Hello, I'm Dale Davidson. I hope you're enjoying Las Vegas tonight. The guests we've had on the program are wonderful examples of Christians who take seriously Christ's command to love one another. In addition to the hundreds of television stations across the United States now carrying our show, we have been presented with the outstanding opportunity to bring these inspiring stories to people around the world. An international satellite network in the Russian and Ukrainian languages has asked us to provide them with episodes to be broadcast to millions. To make a gift to support this very special effort, Please send your check or money order to Dale Davidson Ministries, 9030 West Sahara Avenue, number 255, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89117. To use your credit or debit card, call 702-480-3989. Thank you and God bless you. Drawn by the lights, glamour, and opportunities in Sin City, they come from all over the world searching for their chance to be a pretty woman, a success, or maybe just to have a better life. Be somebody. What happened after they got here is literally changing the world. From the story of Tommy Scott, a former gang enforcer turned Christian evangelist, to the Hookers for Jesus Outreach Ministry, 
to the heart-wrenching story of Arturo Martinez and his heroic act of forgiving the man who assaulted and murdered his wife and 10-year-old daughter. Las Vegas Tonight presents an extraordinary depiction of Las Vegas as a city of transformation from Sin City to Vegas Saints. Las Vegas Tonight, from Sin City to Vegas Saints, a collection of true stories of transformation, people whose lives were transformed, and people who are now transforming the world. And welcome back to Las Vegas Tonight. As promised, we have a very special guest with us. Uh, Pastor Christopher has worked with him at Multnomah University. Uh, he felt that he's got a great, great story to tell, not only about Multnomah and his time there as a student, but also everything in, about his life. Michael Williams. Hey, nice. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming. Great. Thank thanks you for, for having coming. me here. Yeah, thanks for riding your bike all the way down from mm. Reno. Man, it's God awesome. God bless you for doing it. How long did it take you? It took me six and a half hours. Six and a half. Wow, yes. that's a six ways. Six and a half hours, yes. That's a ways. And yes. here you are. You, you look yeah. fresh. You look like you feel okay. Oh, I feel I feel well. I feel <laughs> that's well. great. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Did you grow up in Nevada? Or? Well, I was born in Susanville, California. Okay. And uh, we grew up um, mostly in Herlong, California. Oh, which okay. is an army base about 60 something miles north of Reno. Oh, okay. Is that yeah. right? Okay. So, yeah, my mom worked for the government. And okay. My father helped with the uh, railroad. Oh, okay. So he, he worked out there too. And so, yeah. Yeah. You have siblings? <clears throat> yeah, I have an older brother. Okay. He's a year and seven months older than I am. Wow, that's great. Yeah. I bet I bet you guys duked it out a little bit when he, you were that age, huh? He beat me up a lot. <laughs> he beat me up a lot. I have four sons. You don't have to tell me yeah, about any yeah. of this. And two of them were pretty close, too. They were about 14 months apart. Right. Yeah. And awesome. then uh, it was hard to tell, you know, who was going to win any given moment, but uh, usually the older one did. Right. <laughs> it goes. So tell me about your early childhood. Did you go to public school? You know, what, what was your backstory? There? Yeah, we uh, we grew up, it's a small little community there on the Army base. And so yeah. uh, it was, I think there was something like 20 something uh, people that graduated for, <laughs> oh, for small class. Any, given, any given year yeah, or so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it was really small there. And I played sports off and on. I played soccer. I was really good at that. Oh, okay. And, uh, Played basketball and uh, I I played football, but I was only the kicker because I was really good at kicking the ball. So <laughs> because of because of the volleyball. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Of, yeah, the soccer. I mean ball. soccer. What am I talking about? <laughs> it's volleyball. Okay. Yeah, soccer. Yeah. And so um, so we grew up in this small knit community there, yeah. and um, it was just pretty awesome. Just growing yeah. up, having that little interaction. Um, we had a little. Um, uh, Assembly of God Church that my mom used to bring us to. Oh, okay. And it was kind of weird because my my mom she went to one church and my dad went to a different church. Oh, okay. Uh, across the street, so that happens. Yeah. Yeah. So we'd be over in our little in our in the little Assembly of God Church, you know, this little light of mine, <laughs> and they'd be over there <laughs> having church across the street at the at the Baptist church. So, <laughs> Michael, I can tell you're really anointed. I can tell well, that you have you. an infectious spirit, and that must be what draws people to you. It is, you know, quite honestly, I mean, I, I, I do a lot of, with acronyms as well, and it's joy, right? It's right. Uh, Jesus and you, and there's nothing in the middle of it. Right. And that to me really is wh where it comes is because right. I started realizing that it wasn't a religion, it was a relationship. It wasn't what I could do or where I could go or how things would be. It was just like, he just wanted to have this personal relationship with me. Sure. And when you find out that the creator of all the universe wants nothing better but to just be a part of who you are and what you're doing and walk with you in these things, that's how we get to a closer relationship with even people. I think that this starts to break down the barriers because now you start to be, you're genuine. People realize they're like, wow, <laughs> this guy has love and he has love for me. Yeah, and and why? I mean, there's so many different things that have happened in my life with being here as the chaplain for the CMA. Um, I've gotten to a place, and I and I had asked God. I was like, God, why would you have this rapper, right? <laughs> yeah. Why would you have this gospel rapper? Why would you have him be the chaplain of a CMA, a Christian Motorcycle, a Christian Association. Motorcycle yeah. Association? Why would you do that? But 
he revealed it to me through a couple of different ways. Is there's some there's certain groups that wouldn't talk to me because of my skin color. Oh. Let's just be honest. That still goes on. But the fact of the say. matter is is that when they're when one of their members go down, they need a chaplain. Right. And God says, they're gonna get you. <laughs> yeah, right? right. So yeah. God is awesome. It's, it, he's very strategic. And so yeah, yeah. we get here and now the whole thing's changed because he's sending somebody who doesn't care who's there. All we care about is their soul. When we right. get there, it doesn't matter what you've done, where you've been. Right. This could be your last breath. Let it be Jesus when it speaks. Right? right? And so that's just the way that we've just impacted this world. We've just, God has been using me on different forms and platforms, and I'm just letting him be famous everywhere we go. So. That's wonderful. <laughs> yeah, that's wonderful. Awesome. Um, tell us a little bit about Multnomah University. We talked during the first segment with Christopher about the university. Right. And uh, you're a graduate, right? I am. I just got my bachelor's degree. The first in my whole family. Wow, it was congratulations. Pretty, it was pretty awesome. Um, you know, I had I had so many misconceptions. I'll tell you, I grew up kind of thug, uh, not not just kind of thug. I grew up thug, <laughs> yeah. okay. And and I was a drug addict, and I was a drug dealer, and I've yeah. done all of these different things that just did not bring any glory to God. Right. But just so happened, uh, in one of the circles of friends that I happened to be with, he happened to be uh, his name is Tramiel. And he he attended there, and he was doing the student worker thing. Yeah. And he says, "Come by, we're gonna uh, come by and help me real quick. I'm gonna, uh, you know, mop the floors or something." And yeah. and so we get there, and then all of a sudden, I get my eyes open to this. Well, I had this misconception all the time. Oh, well, you know, surround yourself with successful people, and you'll be successful. And I was like, well, my idea of success at the time didn't bring my. I mean, my pockets were fat, but my soul was empty. Yeah, I understand. And so yeah. when it really came down to it, I had to make a, a, a real hard decision. And when God calls you to something, he doesn't, he doesn't stop calling because you send him to voicemail, right? Yeah. He, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. he, yeah. you know what I'm saying? he just yeah. continues to call. Yeah. And it's, you know, yeah. you know sometimes, it's a, sometimes it's a gentle call, and sometimes it gets to the point where it's off the hook. <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> and so that's how yeah. he's been with me all my life, is it's yeah. always been this really loud ring, and it's time for you to go do this. And even though it might be um, unconventional sometimes to come that way, yeah. but for me, it's normal. I'm I'm good with that. I'm I'm all right with it. So I live my life out loud. I turn the volume up and I break the knob. Off. <laughs> oh, so, God bless you. God. So you studied yes. uh, theology and so yeah. So yeah. I got my I got my bachelor's in in Bible and theology, and now I'm currently undertaking my master's in divinity. Wow. So I'm That's huge. St studying Greek right now and. Wow. Like I said, I thought, well, God, why do you have me here? Once again, sure. you know, I always have the questions. I don't, right. I, I don't, I, I got questions for God. I don't question God. So right. let's just be real. <laughs> let's just be yeah. real there. So, That's good. but um, what it is is, He's given me this understanding with this world of relativism, where when I go into urban places and I can bring an original language and in, in proof that there's document after document after deep documents right. that there was a truth in this place here right when you go here and you speak the truth right everything else has to go away and it doesn't matter who you are or where you've been and i've been in some some pretty sticky situations and some 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 tough places but the fact of the matter is is that god is the lion of judah Oh, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you you only need to let the lion out. <laughs> you, you, you know what I mean? And so and then all the lying goes away. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Right? I yeah. love it. So it's been yeah. pretty awesome. God has really been, wow. been been faithful in that. So that's great. So I love the I love all of the professors. I love Christopher Dare's d diversity classes. He's yeah. taught me so much about um, about why we should have bigger church. Yes, right? yes, like, all of us. Yeah, he's like saying, yeah. let's just knock out some walls, right? <laughs> yeah, and that's just, right. Just let the city be the church, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, and yeah. so uh, that's just kind of where it goes. And when we see the diversity and we start to celebrate that, yeah. and we start to see that, hey, look, you can minister to people that I cannot. Yes. And I'm going to minister to people that you won't. Yeah. Sometimes, right? Yes, right. And it can go back and forth that sure. way too, right? So oh, I don't yeah. want to, I don't want to, you know, like we're in competition because it's not. We we should co complete each other. Yeah. Right. We're all on so the same team. Exactly. Yeah, so absolutely. so yeah. when we get to that idea, 
in that piece, we realize that. And so I got professors and, and, and just a whole surrounding people that are cheering me on. I didn't have the greatest background in, in education, but they're helping me get to where I need to be at so that I can be effective. Oh. And that's what's really important. I think that if we have effective leaders, people that don't just say, hey, look, well, let me just tell you this story. Well, w w people nowadays are Googling to find out whether or not God's dead or not, right? right yeah, so yeah. Your, your degree better be better than a Google search. <laughs> I love it. Amen. I love it. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry to say we're out of time. God no bless you. What an honor to meet you. Uh, it's terrific work you're doing. And you said some pretty profound things today, brother. Well, I thank you, and I really appreciate you bringing me here. Oh, and you I, bet. And I'd just love to come back anytime. <laughs> I want you to. That's my next offer. Yes, next sir. time you're in town, we'll do a whole show with you. Hey, let's do it. Okay. God bless you. Michael Williams, what a great guy. We'll be back with Christopher Dare to wrap things up right after this. A potential audience of more than 50 million people is reached every week by Las Vegas Tonight. To keep the important message of Christ's love on the air, we need your prayers and financial blessings. Please send your tax-deductible gift to Dale Davidson Ministries, 9030 West Sahara Avenue, number 255, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89117. For a donation of $25 or more, We'll send you a copy of Dale Davidson's new book, Las Vegas Tonight, From Sin City to Vegas Saints. You'll love these inspiring stories of Las Vegas Christians who are changing the world. Or donate to the ministry, or order Dale's book by going to vegasaints.org. That's vegasaints.org. Or call us today at 702-480-3989. That's 480-3989. God bless you. Hello, I'm Dale Davidson. I hope you're enjoying Las Vegas tonight. The guests we've had on the program are wonderful examples of Christians who take seriously Christ's command to love one another. In addition to the hundreds of television stations across the United States now carrying our show, we have been presented with the outstanding opportunity to bring these inspiring stories to people around the world. An international satellite network in the Russian and Ukrainian languages has asked us to provide them with episodes to be broadcast to millions. To make a gift to support this very special effort, please send your check or money order to Dale Davidson Ministries, 9030 West Sahara Avenue, number 255, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89117. To use your credit or debit card, call 702-480-3989. Thank you, and God bless you. Drawn by the lights, glamour, and opportunities in Sin City, they come from all over the world, searching for their chance to be a pretty woman, a success, or maybe just to have a better life. Be somebody. What happened after they got here is literally changing the world. From the story of Tommy Scott, a former gang enforcer turned Christian evangelist, to the Hookers for Jesus Outreach Ministry, to the heart-wrenching story of Arturo Martinez and his heroic act of forgiving the man who assaulted and murdered his wife and 10-year-old daughter, Las Vegas Tonight presents an extraordinary depiction of Las Vegas as a city of transformation from Sin City to Vegas Saints. Las Vegas Tonight. From Sin City to Vegas Saints, a collection of true stories of transformation. People whose lives were transformed, and people who are now transforming the world. Welcome back to Las Vegas tonight. We're in our third, and I'm sorry to say final, segment of this terrific show. Uh, Michael Williams was a great guest. Good man. Uh, he's, a, he's a wonderful example, I think, of what Multnomah is doing. And tell us a little bit about the university and what your plans are for uh, Nevada. So Multnomah University is based out of Portland, Oregon. So it's important that you, you know that because we're going to talk about it in the north in Reno, and you're like, what is going yeah. on? Where is Multnomah there? We actually have a, a, a campus there as well. Okay. And we are expanding that throughout the whole state. So we have a license. We're fully accredited. Oh, that's great. And, and, and as a university. So any of our credits transfer into 
UNLV, UNR, or wherever else you want to go. Oh, okay. And so it's pretty exciting to see all that. So I have the honor of being a professor for them for the last four years about. Right. And I teach a lot of the leadership, the practical pastoring, all that kind of stuff. But as of late, probably the last year, we've been working as uh, the Ministry of Development of uh, and so kind of stepping in trying to bring Multnomah down to Las Vegas. Oh, okay. And so we've it's been... It's really needed here. Well, it, it's yeah. exciting. You know, and yeah. looking at it, it definitely feels like we're going to fill a hole for a few reasons. One is just ministry-wise, we have to continue to, to sharpen our skills. And, and it's so hard because it's so easy to get in the rut of what we do thinking we know what we're doing. Yeah, and, yeah. But we don't see that the results... Always a delusion. Yeah, well, it is. <laughs> it is. It is. So for me, I had the honor of pastoring for now the last 26 years. So I get to bring that to the table. But we're doing these practicums that are very exciting. That's why I'm here tonight, actually. Yeah. I'll be here tonight hanging out, and I'll be teaching a whole practicum on diversity. So okay. what, what we do is we try to find things that can help students or help pastors or help leaders really grow in what they're facing every day. And this idea of diversity well, our world defines it one way. Oh, yeah. It's not really a biblical, that's, that's not really the definition that it used to be mm -hmm. or what the Bible would say. And so we're going to sit down and really just have a, a big conversation amongst 30, 40, maybe even more people. You know, the first one we had, we almost had 90 people there, which is yeah, kind of fun. I, know. I don't know if we'll have that kind of crowd tonight because, you know, yeah. it's always gets exciting for the first one. We'll see how <laughs> the last one of the session goes. Yeah. Um, but we're not just doing practicums, though. We, we're actually, come the fall, we'll have classes here. Mm -hmm. We have a, a leadership class that we're doing. And, and the neat thing is we're doing it in two, two ways. You could take it for credit and pay the full price for credits and stuff, and that's just what it is. Or you can take that same class and you take it kind of as a portfolio class and that's something that we can explain. It's the idea you keep track of all the work you've done and you can take it and you can pay a lot less and then if you ever want to take that portfolio back to a college, you can get credit for it. So it's okay. one of those things that's more of a certificate class with, oh, okay. with the more inexpensive Other universities approach. do that. They do yeah. it all the time. Yeah. This is a very normal thing. Yeah. But the neat thing about it is somebody who might say, I don't care if I'm ever getting a degree, but I would love to take a leadership class. So you can take this right. class for 16 week class for you know 150 bucks and you have a professor wow. here in class. You don't get that kind of thing anywhere else. So no. Multnomah is really open to coming with some interesting ideas, uh, kind of some creative ideas to make it to where people can really step in. Yeah. And so we'll be offering that. And then the other thing that's kind of neat, so I actually am teaching a full diversity class in the fall and I just got permission to actually open it up where we can do it live, where people can sign up for the class right. and be in my class uh, via um, FaceTime or whatever we want to wow, use. That's and so great. we have permission to do that. So I will be talking about that tonight and sending out stuff. Yeah. So people can either take an online class with some of our professors like me, yeah. or they can take one with a local professor that we've hired here. Yeah. And so, and then we'll also have practicums again next fall. And those practicums are going to just going to be continued in different areas of communication. And leadership. is anybody welcome? Or are you anybody's limiting welcome? It? Oh, okay. No, anybody's welcome. Yeah, okay. You know, for us, if you're interested in any role in a church or yeah. whatever, every topic we're talking about, even if you're not a senior pastor or maybe you don't do that all the time, it's, it's leadership principles. It's principles. Sure. Yeah. We live by principles, and that's what yeah. we have to keep sharp. Yeah. And so it's our focus. It's all that stuff. So. To be amongst a cohort of people who care about ministry yeah. and God and learning. Yeah. I don't know who doesn't want to hang out with those people, but oh, that's absolutely. the place to be. Yeah. So that's the kind of stuff we're gonna do. And you know, and, and if I do a good job, I might even talk you into teaching a class. No, uh, I love teaching. Yeah, I was gonna say I, I know. Love teaching. I, yeah, I I'm doing it right now so. and and I have to travel a ways down to San Diego to do it, but I'll tell you it in in really reinvigorates me, you know, because these kids are just full of questions. You know, they ask things that you just can't imagine they're mm -hmm. thinking about. They're surprisingly mature, a lot of them for their age. And they're facing some problems um, because of what's going on in our nation, what's going on in our culture that, uh, you know, old guys like me didn't have to face. It, it, is, it is very different. I tell you, we, you guys just, we just got done finished talking to Michael. And he's a great example. We have many others who, who had a whole other life before getting yeah. to this place where they knew they wanted to do this. Yeah. But God has taken every bit of it, sure. every bit of it, and sure. turned it around and allowed it to be part of his story. Yeah. And I, I just say there's a lot of people who discount themselves that they could never be used by God like this. But I disagree. I think oh, yeah. every one of us are at a place that God has a purpose for us. We have lives to touch. 
I mean, we're only here to be as ambassadors. I mean, sure. as soon as you give your life to Christ, sure. why yeah. are we still here? Yeah. Take me away. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going right. to screw this thing up. Why, yeah. why leave me here yeah. except for the one purpose of being an ambassador for yeah. him? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we get to enjoy Do a few other job. things. I yeah. love being married. I love having kids. I love all that stuff. But in yeah. the end, I'm here to be an ambassador for him. Yeah, what's important. That's what it's about. Yeah, and it absolutely is. And I'll never get over the fact that, and this happened a few years ago when I first started teaching at this college, I'll never get over the fact that I say things and kids write them down. <laughs> you know, I'm like, you're actually writing that down like I know what I'm talking it, about. It works you know? that well. It works that well. <laughs> I, I truly enjoyed teaching, though, and it's, yeah. it's great being amongst other peers, other students. And I actually learn a lot from our students. I sure. think iron sharpens iron, and, yeah. and you know, we, we have full conversations that, you know, I even tell them, you know, don't, don't just take that, but if you disagree, I want to know what it is and why. Yeah. Because maybe you're right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> maybe I need to learn yeah, from you. Yeah, yeah. I've had that happen in the classroom. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, speaking of education, let's talk about uh, secondary education, but also uh, lower level mm -hmm. education. You started a Christian school up there in the north part of our state, and you're still involved. I think you're still the chairman. I am. Um, tell me all about the school. What's the name of the so school? So that's Excel Christian School. Okay. And then down here in Vegas, I used to help run, and I'd oversee the Cornerstone Academy right, right here. Right. I helped bring that in with Robin Yeah, my Joyce youngest son and, went there. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, so I used to oversee that. So I've been overseeing private education for the last 15 years. And I'll just tell you, it's a, it's a valuable resource. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, it, and it's interesting. It's one of those things that some people, and I've talked to pastors, and I even used to think this way, would say things like, well, we don't want to take our kids out of the public school. They're missionaries. They need to be in there. Right. And I actually, in some right. ways, agree with some of those yeah. things. That yeah. We cannot just hide everybody from this world and think that we're going to touch it. Put them in the Christian bubble. Yeah. yeah. However, at the same time, you better know that your child is ready to carry that suitcase. You better be ready yeah. to carry that culture along with them. Yeah. Because some of them aren't ready. Some aren't ready. To, they don't yeah. have... The means, and so I, I actually had one student that I felt very comfortable to go to public school, and I had one student that I very much did not. <laughs> yeah. And they both turned out very good, but oh, I'm glad yeah. I took the route that God put me in yeah, my heart. That's wonderful. Yeah. And uh, you've stepped away from day-to-day -day management of the school. Yeah, I couldn't time. Can't imagine you're not doing anything else. Well, between city council, <laughs> I serve on quite a few boards for city council. Yeah, I know you do. And so <laughs> getting to do that and and work with the veterans group like I do, and then. Uh, working at the college like I do, it just came where I couldn't keep doing all the different things. Oh, yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, I'm teasing. You know that. <laughs> um, let's talk about your church. You started oh, a church up there, and eight you years were ago. Sen senior pastor, mm -hmm. and wow. uh, that an it is, is enough, <laughs> you know, let alone doing everything else, as you well know. You know, we've talked I, about this. Pastoring oh, is tough. I love senior pastoring, though. Yeah, I'll tell you, yeah. it's the lightest ministry that I got to be a part of. And, and part of it's because everything I learned down here. <laughs> I yeah, say that, yeah. you know, it was been great being down here. We, yeah. Great ministry, you got to do some great things. But yeah. uh, I learned a lot of lessons and applying them up there. And it was awesome. For about nine years mm -hmm. actually ago, we started that church and we saw it just touch so many lives. We had an yeah. incredible network and we yeah. got to really, really touch just being inside of families' lives. And yeah. it's one thing I tried to make sure we did because if you're not careful, the larger your church grows, the less you're connected to anybody. Yeah. People come and go and they say, ooh, we had church, but you never connected. Yes. So what did you do? I, I question yeah. if you maybe had church or not because mm -hmm. I, I, you, you showed up, you you didn't connect with anybody. There's, what did you do? Yes, you know, know. You know, and so, and because we are the church, we need to make sure we're connecting it's with each other. It's not a building, it's, it's the people. Exactly. And, uh, and, you know, I, I have nothing against large churches at all. There's a place for big seeker-sensitive mm -hmm. churches, for example. Churches uh, grow on their own, and you can't stop it, mm -hmm. you know, and you don't want to stop it. But it's a different experience, no, you it, know. It totally is. And I, after running a large church, because our church at one point was about 1,500 over at Cornerstone. And yeah. We had to find so many creative ways to try to create small groups yeah. out of the big group. Yeah. And that was what us big church tries to do. And they know that. Yeah, and that's sure. it. And that's when I work with larger churches, that's what we yeah. work on doing is how do we create smaller, intimate groups so people can have those connections. Yeah. Well, when you have a church of 180, you know, and my church even one time said, said around 50 for a long time, right. you know, and... and you really get to know them. And yeah, it, you know it, oh, the families. It was you know where they're at. It was great, yeah. and we got to walk yeah. with them and know them. So it, 
It, it's been good. As yeah. of now, though, I have folded our church in with another church, yeah. which has been fantastic. Yeah, that's <laughs> I, great. I, there, there's a few things I've There's missed. a good synergy. Oh, there on. is. Yeah. There is. The senior pastor does an awesome job. He's a good man. He's definitely done a good job of putting his arms around everybody. And yeah. then I get to just kind of be more of a consultant for him or mm -hmm. a pastor that helps. And I teach and I share. And uh, But my travels don't impede yeah. the life of the church. Because that's yeah. the hard part about being a small church. That's kind of what happened. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You leave and, and they feel like they've yeah. lost the head of the, mm -hmm. of the whole thing and the feeling that it all had. Okay. We need to hear about Kenya. Okay. Kenya. Yeah. So just real quickly. If you remember a name, Marty Ward. Marty Ward, Community for Christ. Marty Ward went over. She was, uh, she told us she was 65 when she went. She really was 75. She <laughs> lied to us. She did. And she came back after a year and said, here's the reason I lied is you wouldn't have let me go. But I yeah. felt so bad the whole year. You know, we thought when she was going to confess that she did something bad in Africa. We're like, oh. But she, she was yeah. 75 when she yeah. first went. Wow. But she went back for about six, seven years and ended up dying. Uh, and from malaria because she gave her medicine to somebody. Oh, Lord. Well, she'd go every year, and as the missions pastor at Cornerstone, I watched it, and it was exciting. Mm -hmm. But I always, you know, just kind of was like, yeah, you're doing your thing, you're doing your thing. And, and it was time to go back and help with her funeral. And uh, Greg Massonary was supposed to go. What so, a great what a great he, man of God he, Greg he, is, and uh, what a great influence and mentor he's oh without he's question to you yeah but this time he made me mad to this really? oh, oh, well because he was supposed happen. to go <laughs> oh and he says i'm not going i can't go so you have to go well i had just gotten back from another trip i i should have been traveling again and that was gonna be a three-week trip wow and i remember sitting there going i don't want to go yeah. you know i don't wanna. Yeah. and so i ended up going and my wife was good with it and it was ended up i'll tell you what being there I got to see what Marty put together. Well, I showed up, and we had a pastor's conference of 600 people. Oh, my Lord. All thanking Marty Ward for what she had done. And I got to see, I was so humble. Wow. I, I, I got to tell you, I sat back just looking, going, why didn't I, why wasn't I more involved in what she was doing? Why, why couldn't I see it? And, and, and then even being there, meeting some of those people, they're still the dearest friends. I remember sitting there yeah. and, and having church with them. And I, honestly, I finished, I think I went about two hours in my teaching, because I, I was going long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got done. They're sitting yeah. on wood benches, and we're sitting there, and uh, so I'm done, and then, so I stop, and I pray for him, and the guy comes up and says, you're done? And I'm all, yeah. He goes, they're not done. I had to teach another three hours. Oh, they sat Lord. there on that, they weren't going to move. We took a little break, and they came right back, and we... I taught the rest of my sermons. I lost my voice that food trip because they just were so. They would. Just you used sit. it all up. It didn't was you? gone. <laughs> oh, and me to lose my voice—that's a bad day. Uh, yeah, that's but it was, bad. <laughs> man, it was so humbling. And there's funny stories as well, scary stories. But in the very end, uh, I, I'd leave just looking at that trip as it was. It was a turning point probably for me in ministry, wow. just because God took and took Christopher who blessing. thought he knew so much and learned I blessing. know very little. Well, thanks for the story. Yeah. We only have a couple of minutes yeah. left, uh, Chris, but I'd love for you to uh, yes. directly uh, address our audience. We have uh, millions of people around the world, thank God, that watch this show. And uh, let's give them an opportunity to come to Christ and say whatever you like. Amen. So I would share this. In my life, I have seen God take a man like me who really uh, not very talented and I say that I, I can't sing <laughs> you don't want me to sing trust me <laughs> I you know I, I, I only do so much and the Lord took my life and said you know I have a purpose for you and when when he speaks life into your life you're gonna find that your reason for living changes now here's the greatest thing is that he made the way he is the one that came and gave us life so we could have life a lot of times we tend to go out and live this life where we think we're filling our life with all this goodness. We think it's good until it turns sour. And all of a sudden it turns sour and we don't know what to do. Well, here's the great news is God said, the Bible tells us that Jesus came and he's, he loved us while we were still sinners. He loved us while we were still broken, while we were still were empty. And he saw value in us. He didn't just see value of what he's going to do, but he saw what he can do in your life and through your life. And he says, you know what, I have a purpose for you. I have a reason for you to live. And here's the greatest thing. You don't have to jump high enough to get that love. You don't have to all of a sudden do a particular thing. It's just surrender. 
So for me, and this is my, my challenge to everybody out there, if you want to know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, it pretty much is this. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Jesus, I repent. Jesus, I surrender. And when, in that process, you start learning about Him. And then He takes you on this amazing journey. But He says it's all about what He's done, not about what I've done, not about what you've done. That means your past, that's not a factor. It means your, your present fears are not a factor. Your fear of your future, not a factor, because He did the work of it. So if we come and we grab onto Him, He has every step laid out for us. All you got to do is reach out to Him. Can I pray with you now? Lord, I come to you and I pray right now for everyone listening. And I'd ask if you're out there and you're listening and you want to give your life to the Lord. Yes, Lord. That you say this prayer with me. Dear Lord, I come to you right now. Lord, I pray that you show me who you are. Lord, I pray that you, in a way that you only can do, speak into my heart. Father, forgive me of my sins. Show me how to believe. Show me how to follow you. Show me how to live for you. Lord, I accept you as king and ruler of my life. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. And, and amen. Christopher, thanks for coming. Um, and a standing offer from <laughs> us to you. Come by next time you're in town. Awesome. Thank okay. you so much. God bless you. Christopher Dare, wonderful man. We really appreciate him coming. And as I say each and every show, or at least I try to remember when it comes to Christ, please walk with him. A potential audience of more than 50 million people is reached every week by Las Vegas Tonight. To keep the important message of Christ's love on the air, we need your prayers and financial blessings. Please send your tax-deductible gift to Dale Davidson Ministries, 9030 West Sahara Avenue, number 255, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89117. For a donation of $25 or more, We'll send you a copy of Dale Davidson's new book, Las Vegas Tonight, From Sin City to Vegas Saints. You'll love these inspiring stories of Las Vegas Christians who are changing the world. Or donate to the ministry, or order Dale's book by going to vegasaints.org. That's vegasaints.org. Or call us today at 702-480-3989. That's 480-3989. God bless you. From the story of Tommy Scott, a former gang enforcer turned Christian evangelist, to the Hookers for Jesus Outreach Ministry, to the heart-wrenching story of Arturo Martinez, and his heroic act of forgiving the man who assaulted and murdered his wife and 10-year-old daughter, Las Vegas Tonight presents an extraordinary depiction of Las Vegas as a city of transformation from Sin City to Vegas Saints. Las Vegas Tonight, from Sin City to Vegas Saints, a collection of true stories of transformation, people whose lives were transformed, and people who are now transforming the world. Hello, I'm Dale Davidson. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Las Vegas Tonight. Allow me to take just a few moments to let you know how you can learn more about some of the fascinating guests that I've interviewed. My new book, Las Vegas Tonight, From Sin City to Vegas Saints, is now available around the world. In it, I profile amazing people who make Las Vegas something much more than just a place to party. These compelling stories often tell of people who came to Las Vegas for reasons much different than the innovative ministries they ended up leading right here in Sin City. Take, for example, Tommy Scott known as Hitman to his fellow members of an infamous gang in South Central Los Angeles, Tommy was serving time in a Las Vegas jail and contemplating suicide when a couple of pastors visited him in the lockup and led him to Christ. Tommy immediately began studying the Word and has become an on-fire evangelist and Christian author. Then there's Annie Meadows. Annie began life in a rural part of Kentucky increasingly was fascinated with the occult and eventually became a full-fledged witch. Rejecting anything having to do with God, she angrily vowed never to attend church or have anything at all to do with religion. Then, like Tommy, she had an encounter with the living Christ and now travels the world as a gospel singer and writes Christian children's books. 
Pastor Chris Chappell was an avowed atheist who also wanted nothing to do with the Lord. He was a successful businessman who felt he surely didn't need Jesus. His wife and father-in-law convinced him to attend church, and he felt a stirring that made him investigate the Bible's claims. Telling the Lord that he needed answers to his objections, he found those answers in a supernatural way and is now leading a remarkable church, Casa de Luz, in what's called the Naked City, which is a neighborhood just off the famous Las Vegas Strip. This formerly crime-ridden area is now experiencing a remarkable turnaround, and his church is serving that community in amazing ways. Doc Jones traveled to Las Vegas from New York on a personal mission to make as much money as he could. A born entrepreneur, he started a photography business that specialized in taking pictures of groups of partiers at the hot nightclubs on the Strip. He then learned that by referring young guys to the city strip clubs, he could pick up lots of cash from the club's owners. That evolved into sending young women who were wannabe strippers to these so-called gentlemen's clubs, and then he managed their careers. Eventually, he felt so empty and despondent that he, too, thought seriously of suicide. Hearing a sermon about the prodigal son caused him to dedicate his life to Christ. Now an exceptional musician and composer of gospel rap, hip-hop, and spoken word genres, he is helping change Las Vegas from a place where sin abounds to a city where grace abounds more. Pastor Clegg Seth was an aspiring actor and screenwriter in Hollywood and a strong Christian who wanted to make a real difference for Christ in the entertainment world. But the Lord called him to establish a crisis hotline for runaway teens who were coming to Hollywood to pursue their silver screen dreams. He then started halfway houses for men and women with substance abuse and other problems. He also helped set up a similar men's home in Las Vegas. At one point, he developed a gambling habit, but the Lord delivered him from that problem, and he now devotes his life to sharing Christ with men in prison, serving seniors in a church setting, along with visits to nursing homes and hospitals. He has continued his quest to influence Hollywood through a ministry called The Christian Studio. I personally really look up to Clegg Seth as a model of how a Christian should live and serve others. He truly is one of the Vegas saints. Read these stories and more in this 226-page book, Las Vegas Tonight, From Sin City to Vegas Saints. You can get your copy in several different ways. Go to my website, vegassaints.org, or order it on Amazon.com or BarnesandNoble.com. It's just $15.99 plus shipping. For more information or to make a donation to Dale Wynn Davidson Ministries that will help us keep this program on the air, please call 702-480-3989. Or you can write to us at Dale Wynn Davidson Ministries, 9030 West Sahara, Suite 255, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89117. And thank you so much for watching Las Vegas Tonight. You've been watching Las Vegas Tonight with Dale Davidson. Send your tax-deductible gifts to Dale Davidson Ministries, 9030 West Sahara Avenue, number 255, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89117.